And finally, I just kind of had to take a big leap and just, you know, quit that truck driving job, and, you know, and I took a, a nice vacation, went to visit uh, Chichen Itza in Mexico to see the stone carvings there. And then when I came back, I didn't have a job. And so I went to a local arts organization called Springboard for the Arts, and they have a job book there. And it happened that there was a sculptor who was looking for an assistant. So I'm working with the one sculptor, and, 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 and then I got an opportunity to work with another sculptor who does large-scale public works. And I think at some point I, I want to try to explore that a little bit more. And so I look at this, it's a, this couple, it's a husband and wife team that, that do this work. And so to see how they, they set up their operations, how they set up, you know, how to take care of like maybe the financial aspects of trying to, to do large scale public work, you know, and how to create budgets, um, you know, how do you, you know, how do you answer um, a you know RFQ a request for qualifications and you know how do you go out and get these large scale public works that you know are a hundred thousand dollars a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and so that's kind of I, I look at them as mentors in, in that respect and how do I you know how can I now you know how can I now like change you know up my up my ante on myself how can I raise the level of my work to a larger scale so that maybe more people can see it. I've read a lot of artist biographies to see how they kind of have made their way through the world and, and, I, and I take all those things in and then I just, you know, I filter them through myself and, and how best I, you know, they, they can, how can these artists, you know, serve me in a sense. Uh, how can art history serve me and how can I use it to, to, you know, just, you know, continue on to keep doing what I'm doing and to, to you know, expand my ideas and explore the boundaries of, of where art can go, you know. I, I don't know yet, it's, it has a, a lot of aspects to it. I didn't really have a studio space at that time except in my basement um, and at that time I was doing doing a lot of um, wood carving. Well it turns out that uh, the basement was a little bit damper than I thought and so uh, a lot of my wood started molding and so I'm not going to carve molding wood because it, it leads to lung diseases that I don't want to deal with. Um, and so I kind of switched the stone, knowing that it's a, it's a it has a little bit more stability to it. Um, it's not going to mold or anything like that. It's not going to you know gain as much organic matter on it. And so then that's that's kind of what was the impetus of kind of moving towards stone a little bit more. Is you know it's its longevity, it's uh, its stability. Um, and then what happened is that all my tools started rusting as well because it was really dank, dank in that basement. And so that's kind of why I moved back into a, a lower town. Um, studio um, just as a working space and so but I've continued with that stone because because I really it has this you know this this long life to it um, and there's a long tradition in stone carving I mean it and it's something that will you know I can never totally perfect